Hey everybody, welcome back to Bible Pump the Duns. Today we studied Ecclesiastes chapter number 5, so let's get into it. Okay, whenever you get into this chapter, what you're going to find is it's basically about two topics. And if there are any two topics, well, I guess marriage would be a third. If there are any two topics that Solomon is 100% qualified to talk about, it's number one, religion, faith. And number two is money. Uh, the reason why we would say that this is a guy who can talk to us about faith is because this is a guy who grew up knowing God's word and literally had an encounter with God where God told him to ask for anything he wanted and he, he asked for wisdom. God was pleased with that. God blessed his life. Like he, he can talk to us about God because he had a relationship with God. Now, it didn't mean that he always lived that relationship, but he did have one. The other side of this, and probably what hurt his relationship with God, was his expertise with money. We remember back to the book of Deuteronomy that said that the Israelite kings were supposed to sit down every day and to copy out God's word according to and under the supervision of the Levite, of the Levite system, the Levitical priests. Why? So that every day they would, they would be journaling out God's word to hide it in their heart under the authority of a priest. Why? So that he didn't skip anything, miss anything, or get anything wrong. It had to be the right word of God. The next thing it says is these kings are not to build up excessive amount of like horses, like a big military or a, a lot of gold or a lot of silver or wives. And Solomon broke every single one of those. So started great and really drifted toward the end. Well, in the end of this, he, he's talking about faith and he's talking about money. We can get kind of the money stuff first. It's interesting that whenever you read through this, like in verse 10, it says, he who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. Now, that's, that is, that's profound. Really, it's, it, it ought to be in the book of Proverbs because what it means is, and by the way, it doesn't just mean silver. A man can become greedy with anything. So if a man loves silver, he can be greedy with silver. If a man loves ladies, he can be greedy with ladies. If a man loves wealth, if a man loves whatever, you can become greedy with just about anything. It's whatever you love. And so all of this is, all of, but all of that, in Solomon's words, are, are vanity. It's all meaningless. It's all worthless. And here's why. Because when you set the goalposts of your life chasing whatever you're greedy for, the closer you get to it, you start to recognize that it's never enough. So the goalpost keeps moving. So even though you are getting more and more and more, the finish line for you to be satisfied keeps moving and moving and moving. Now, I don't want us to, to read this and to think that money is evil. Why? A lot of people misquote stuff in the Bible, like the love of, uh, like the verse where it says, the love of money is the root of all evil. And they'll say right there, money, the money makes everything evil. That's not what the Bible says. It says the love of money. The greed, the lust, the covetousness, the all, the desire, the worship of that is is the is where all this evil comes from. Tony Evans says that money is a tool to be used, but it is not a god to be worshipped. So Solomon's talking about all of these good money decisions, bad money decisions, the worship of money, uh, how an honest day's work leads to a tired body, uh, but 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 easy sleep. He talks about how you get money. He talks about all that. What your takeaway came from this section? What was it? Yeah. Okay. Um. So essentially, um. This basically says. Uh, you brought nothing into this world, so you're not going to be able to take anything out, right? So uh, this can really be a really great wake-up call for, I think, a lot of people because, um, like, okay, so a lot of people, they spend most of their lives trying to accumulate wealth, power, fame, um, a lot of worldly, um, you know, secular world things. Um, and really, that's, like, because we have, like, such a flawed and limited perspective um, and we're like often not reminded of, uh, like, I don't know. We're not, we always forget about, um, what really matters in life. There we go. Um, so and, we're looking at the short term and forgetting about the eternal. That's right. Okay. Eventually everything here is going to pass away. And if we haven't accumulated our wealth, um, in heaven, which is really what matters, then everything we do here, uh, it's really not going to mean anything. I got you. 
the very first part of this, I think, is the foundation for everything else. Because if you don't get God right, you're not going to get anything else right. If you don't get the heavenly things right, then the earthly things are going to be are going to be brittle and frail and weak to, to satisfy. It's not going to work. So notice what he says in verse number one. He says, walk prudently when you go to the house of God. And what that means is to, uh, to keep guard, to keep watch, to take hold of, to be careful. And what he's saying is that when you go to God's house, be wise and be serious, be obedient and be surrendered. And this is something that whenever we go into God's house, we take God seriously. You'll notice that he talks a, a little bit in verse two about, about prayer. He says, do not be rash with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. So not being rash means we, we, we don't want to be too fast to, to just talk a lot instead of uh, and, and not mean a lot. And so he's talking about humility in prayer, but he's also saying we ought to be careful trying to tell God what he needs to do when he's up there on the throne and we're down here just trying to survive in life. Uh, it, this is about taking our spiritual commitments too casually instead of taking them uh, really seriously. And so what we do is we, we take away from all of this, we think that the, the, the hinge, the foundation of everything else is how we're living our life with God. And our life is best lived with God when our life is lived seriously for God and towards God and through God and because of God and even under God's authority. So Solomon is going to tell, you, tell us that, that if you don't get him right, you're not going to get anything else right. I think that's kind of the takeaway of the passage. We, uh, we hope you enjoyed this week. We'll, we look forward to being with you next week when we study the rest of Ecclesiastes. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.